Hi, my name's John Godfrey and um, I just want to sum up what we've been looking at over the last few talks on walking with God. We started off with Enoch and the concept of walking with God. We saw in Amos how we must be in agreement with God. We saw in Micah how we must walk humbly before God. We saw in Ephesians how we must walk with love. And now I want us to explore how we must walk in truth and in spirit. Because this walk with God is so important that we get it right. For it is life or death to us. Hi, my name's John Godfrey and I want to draw your attention to just two thoughts on walking with God. We're coming to a close of a series of talks that we've been looking at on our walk with God. And in this final talk I'd like us just to think about something that John says in his second letter in verse 4. And he says, I rejoice greatly when I found that some of your children were walking in truth. Walking in truth is a very important aspect of the Christian way of life. Truth is the very nature of God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. Paul to Titus says, God cannot lie. And in Numbers we are told, God is not man that he should lie. Truth is the very nature of God. And so to walk in truth is to walk in the mind and in the spirit of God. Paul took, takes a slightly different aspect on this when he sp speaks to the Galatians in chapter 5. He says, Those who are in Christ crucify the flesh in its passions and desires. If you live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Jesus tells us that they who worship the Lord must worship him in truth and in spirit. For such the Father seek to worship him. Truth and spirit go together. But to be able to fulfill these two aspects of our Christian life, we need first to be able to crucify the flesh, put it to death. So there's no longer I that live. It's no longer me or myself. My pride, my importance becomes of no significance. I need to be able to die in the flesh to this world, to all the pleasures of this world, to put the flesh with all its passions and desires under the blood of Christ. That the driving force is the spirit of the living God. Because when we crucify the flesh, we are living then in the Spirit. And Paul says if we are living in the Spirit, then walk in the Spirit. And John says, I rejoice when I heard they were walking in truth. Truth and the Spirit are both physical and spiritual concepts of our relationship with God. Truth is that which identifies us as being the children of God because in truth we can come into the presence of God and we see ourselves as we are we see God as he is and we understand what that truth is and because we understand that truth we are able to live in it to walk in it to make it our truth so God's standards becomes our standards the world that looks upon us sees us and knows that we are a people who are of truth. Our word is our bond. Jesus says, 
let your yes be yes and your no be no. We are a people whose word is their bond. You can rely upon what they say. They don't hide in lies. They don't hide in shadows. Truth is always paramount in the way that they live and in the way that we worship. Because to worship God in truth is to worship Him in spirit. For it is the Spirit of God that controls our spirit which makes our worship true and sincere. We're not uttering words which are false and without meaning. What we are doing is presenting ourselves before God in a way that is honourable, honest. We're being honest to ourselves, we're being honest towards God, we're being honest towards one another. And it's in that truth and in that spirit that we find life. For Jesus is that life tied up with that truth. God is our eternal life tied up with our spirit. And our life, if it is to be eternally spent with God, is to be based in spirit and in truth. We need to be, as it were, dead to this world. Putting this world and all its darkness and all its shadows on one side, storing up for ourselves in God's kingdom our treasure. Now this is where we need to be. This is why our Christian life sometimes is weak and frail, because we're not walking in God's truth. We're not walking in God's spirit. Now we need to put death over our flesh. We need to put life over our spiritual war. We need to be alive in Christ so that the truth that is God, the truth that is Christ, lives within us and we're not making a mockery of who God is. So therefore, dear friends, as we look and as we think about these scriptures, let us become very much aware that we need to be found in God's truth. We need to be anchored steadily and steadfastly in his spirit. Not to be double-minded, but to be single-minded. Not to have one foot in this world and one foot in God's kingdom, because that does not work. We need to be single-minded unto God. Serving him in the world, but serving him also in the spirit. That our guiding force is through the spiritual into the physical so that our physical and spiritual lives are in harmony our heart and our spirit are joined together as one so friends as we come to the end of these talks I pray that indeed God will be able to draw nearer to you as you draw near to him for James says if we draw near unto him he will draw near unto us so let that drawing together be essential in your life so that you and I can say God is indeed the power and the life that is within us and his truth is our truth. And so as we finish these thoughts let us just take time to examine ourselves that we may see God's truth in us and see that we're not just living in the Spirit but walking in the Spirit. May God draw very near to us and bless his thoughts to us. Thank you.